I think we've got on the line with us a guy that I absolutely love. He's, uh, his name is Barry Nussbaum. He's an international security expert. He's huge in politics, been in it for about 40 years, an attorney uh, from his underground lair in parts unknown. Barry, it's great to have you with us. Great to be with you, and congratulations on the tremendous launch of Crave Media. Thanks, Thank Barry. You. I appreciate it. You know, uh, it's one of those things that we think has long been coming. You've got mainstream media out there that doesn't report a lot of things that should be reported. These guys uh, have to have to kind of kowtow to their advertisers and to big corporate America and that kind of stuff. Um, I love what you're doing. You're a, a regular on One American News Network, which I find to be just one of the greatest news networks out there for that, uh, that demographic. And uh, Barry, today I wanted to talk with you, we could, about the coronavirus bill, the $2.2 trillion, what they called the CARES bill. Yeah, it's uh, an astounding change in American history. It's never happened. Uh, this is money created out of the ethers, uh, supposedly to solve the damage economically caused by literally the shutdown of America. And, you know, with this bill, obviously, we, we've broken it down uh, at the very, very most out of two point two trillion dollars, only about six hundred billion, if it all gets put out and the people are actually able to get it, is going to go to the American people. And really, only that amount has much to do with the coronavirus. The rest of it is going to big corporations who had huge record profits last year. In fact, you have all the CEOs, all the CEOs on CNBC, Fox Business News, the, last, the third and fourth quarter of last year, talking about their record profits, their $20 million bonuses. Uh, I think we're going to pull, pull pictures of some of their houses up here to show you. And now they're back to the government saying, hey, you know what, give us a handout. And by the way, that handout probably is not ever going to have to be paid back. And while the people wait for their $1,200, they're already getting their money. What do you make of this? Well, I, I think what we have to address first, Kent, obviously, is the important question that nobody seems to ask very often, which is, is the cure for the disease worse than the disease. I pulled some statistics for this morning to kind of review. Uh, we're sitting right now at about 9,000 deaths in America from coronavirus. And to every one of those 9,000 families, that's a catastrophe. But let's put it in proper perspective when we're talking about a country with well over 300 million Americans. Did you know that these following causes of death draft, I'm sorry, dwarf corona deaths by exponential factors? For example, 66,000 mothers have died during childbirth. 104,000 have died from the regular flu. Now, keep in mind, that's 10x coronavirus. So you're saying 10,000 10, 10, people have died, or 10 times the amount of people have died from regular flu than the coronavirus so far. Right. 230,000 people have died of suicide, 289,000 people in automobile accidents, a little over half a million from alcohol overdose, a million seventy thousand from smoking. A million eight from cancer and two million from heart disease. Now, all those things happen every year, year after year. We're working on it. But did you know that we have completely destroyed the American economy over the deaths of 9,000 people? And Barry, why, why do you think it is that everyone's made such a big deal about it? Again, I know it's kind of a mystery thing, and I know they really put it out there. If you get it, and it could be horrible and all that kind of stuff. But as you see this death, death rate getting close to the same as the regular flu, which is that's where it's going as more people get tested, that thing is flattening out big time. Why do they make such a big thing out of, it, uh, out of the box? I have worked on the answer to that question for two and a half months. And to be really blunt, Every idea I come up with is worse than the previous one. You sort of fall into the black hole of various competing conspiracy theories because it doesn't make logical sense. 
this isn't just a restrictive economy. This is a completely destroyed economy. The savings of every American are being wiped out. There is not a business in America outside of what's considered essential, which is providing health, safety, food, and transportation and some construction industries that isn't completely at zero, not restricted. I mean, at zero. I don't know anybody that even works anymore except for the UPS guy and the FedEx guy. Let me ask you this. There's two things I want to go down. There are two areas I want to go down. One is how does the government, how, do, how does every United States, every member of the House of Representatives and every senator, with the exception of the ones who are absent, vote for something like this, a bill? How do they get a $2.2 trillion bill passed, America, with them only promising $1,200 and getting all this other stuff out there? Uh, and two, why don't they do something to actually help Americans? Why are they talking about an infrastructure? Let's start with the first question. Well, that's the question that you and I have discussed um, previous to this show, and, and I'm not sure. I know that the $1,200 per person is the way they sold the bill to the American people. We, the Congress, are going to bail you out. How many Americans do we know that $1,200 is a drop in the bucket on a monthly basis for them to survive? Food, rent, gas insurance, and so on. Yeah, you know, the average American family, to put it in perspective, the average American family costs about $3,000 a month to operate. That's rent or house payment on their primary house, car payment or two on their primary cars if there are two people working in the family, their insurance, their food and the utilities, that type of thing, about $3,000 a month. And this thing is probably going to go on for months and months. And even if they turn the tap on today, everybody's screwed for the next three or four months. Oh, there's no question. And, and, and the people that I've spoken to, uh, quite frankly, have said that the $1,200 isn't going to get them over any hump maybe to next Tuesday, but that's about it. It's then what are they going to do? Because like you said, the money was used for corporate America. Yep. And the way to sell it to the regular Joes that are locked in their apartments is to say, hey, we're bailing you out. Well, the truth is they're not getting bailed out. They're getting a Band-Aid and they're bleeding from about six places and they get one Band-Aid. It helps, I guess. But in terms of solving the problem, no, it doesn't. 